it's just crazy when you read about the emotional effects that this brings to a relationship and and they say lack of education you know is one of the the main reason for women's self blame in this did you push record Thanks so much for tuning into our second act with Paige and Silka. I'm so happy to welcome Frank Wiegers back to our program today. Frank, thanks so much for joining me again. Hey, Silka, it's always great to talk with you. We have so much fun. We do, and I'm, I'm so glad you're back for an important topic today. Uh, we will uh, link to our previous segments with Frank. Frank is the co-author of So That's Why They Do That, Men, Women, and Their Hormones, and the co-founder of Top Gun Love and Seriously Seeking Soulmate, along with your beautiful wife, Judith, who has also been on this program uh, a lot. And jointly, you offer lots of advice, obviously, on relationships, sexual health, and um, you know, living your life to the fullest, both physically and sexually, after 50. So... What I want to concentrate on today is a very important topic that recently has come up in several of our videos, and I realize we've never covered it from this perspective, and that is erectile dysfunction. Right. And, uh, you know, how that uh, affects the take I want on this segment, how it affects women and what women need to understand because it's such a difficult topic to talk about. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the research, some of the statistics I saw, in, and I'll, I'll refer to my notes here, is that 80% of women underestimate the, the prevalence you know, of, of ED and just don't understand it. Let, let, let's talk about that, Frank, and what is it that couples need to know to get through this? Well, first of all, let's talk about what is ED. Yes. And, and it really can be a lot of things, but I think the the dictionary things that I found said is when you have, you can't get an erection and sustain intercourse. Now that doesn't mean you may get an erection and you may even be able to start intercourse, but you can't sustain it. That's case B. Case A is where you can't get an erection at all. And then case C is when you can get an erection, you can sustain it, but you can't get to ejaculation. So all three of those things are, are things that happen for men. And my research shows that 90% of this is caused by physical problems, mainly uh, blood flow. And so, guys, if you're suffering from ED, you really need to see a doctor because you may be having blood flow problems, which lead to heart attack. And if you can catch that early. So, uh, you know, guys just won't go to doctors. I know, uh, you know, that's just the way we are. You know, we think we can fix it ourselves. We'll grow out of it. It'll blow over, whatever. It won't. Yeah. And uh, if you go to the doctor, there's help for this. And if you have ED and you haven't been to a doctor, you're, you're crazy. And you're really denying yourself and your partner some really good sexual experiences. So blood flow is, is really one of the big things. Nerve uh, tissues, because we know that the pelvic nerve comes from down through the spinal cord and out into the pelvis. And there's about nine sectors that these pelvic nerves go to they could be damaged or whatever or just old you know because they're older <laughs> and then um I, I, the last one is hormones and we discuss that in our book so that's why they do that there's a whole chapter on andropause which is the male quote menopause if you will it's the male aging which happens at a much slower rate and it does for women. It starts when men are in their 30s and they just keep losing testosterone at a rate of about 1% to 2% a year yeah. until they're in their 60s or whatever and their testosterone's really low. Yeah. Well, my case, I'm going to be 85 in a couple of months and I take testosterone replacement. Now, that's tricky because once you start taking that, your testicles stop making testosterone and rely on, I get it through injection. So that's one thing to consider. So I'm pretty much stuck with that for the rest of my life. But the payoff is 
I'm stronger. <laughs> I, I can't believe you're 85. I, I, well, I would say that every time. Uh, but but let, me, let me just interject uh, and make one point, again, as, as it uh, relates to women as well, is that you, you brought up a great, great point that 90% of the time erectile dysfunction is physical, right. meaning that nobody's doing anything wrong other than maybe not going to the doctor and finding what, what, the, what the thing is. That, uh, and that goes back to that 42% of women in this study that I'm quoting here blame themselves when this happens. Gosh, ladies, it's just not that way. And, you know, well, 10% of it is psychological. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother discussion. Right. right. But uh, I got to tell you, if, if, you know, you need to talk about this. And this is the thing, guys don't want to talk about no, it. No, and neither because, do women. Yeah, and it, because it, they feel shame. They feel guilt. They feel like they're not doing their job. They're not, they're not a man anymore because they can't get it up. Right. You know, they're, <laughs> face it, we're getting older. And, and for me, as I, as I said, as, I, as I'm pushing 85, there's lots of ways to get around this. And drugs are great. I mean, there's um, Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, and so on. And I also happen to have prostate cancer. So as part of my uh, treatment, and, and i got to say, thank God I've had it for 12 years now, or at least known I've had it for 12 years. And it's not growing. It's just there. And uh, that's the case for many, many men. But it also has gives me problems with bladder control and so forth. So one of the things the doctor prescribed for me is a daily dose of Cialis. Mm-hmm. And that helps. So I take it all the time. And if we're going to have sex, I take a little extra. And I just don't want to have to sweat about it. I don't want to have to worry, is it going to stay up or not? And with the Cialis, it's up. And, um, <laughs> it's, and then we can have relax and just have a great time. But guys, <laughs> you need to talk about this. And women, you need to make it safe for them to talk about it, not saying, you know, what's the matter with you? You don't love me anymore? No, no, no. You know, that doesn't work. Well, so. here, here you go. Another really good point, because it is such a difficult subject to talk about. What, what automatically happens with women in, in, in a lot of the cases is that you think, well, oh, am I doing something wrong? Or is he having an affair? Is he, you know, is he getting it somewhere else? Or you don't know how to bring it up. And then when you do bring it up, you, you maybe bring an accusatory tone to it, maybe, some, you know, to where <laughs> you're, 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 you know, having the man pull back from the conversation. And then in your head, it's like, oh, yeah, he is pulling back. It is me. There is something, you know, there, it, it's just crazy when you read about the emotional effects that this brings to a relationship. You know, we, we need to talk about it. And, and they say lack of education, you know, is one of the, the main reason for women's self-blame in this. So, Frank, you know, thank you for talking so honestly about it. I mean, of all oh, things, yeah. you're, you're such a man's man anyway, you know, a former fighter pilot, this, that. You've just... I don't know if it comes with age, with all the research, but you're at a place where, yeah, this is all normal and this is how we handle it. So I'll hand it back over to you. Give us some more advice on getting through this. Well, first of all, (laughs) there's two things I want to talk about. There's a study that they did in England. I love the results of this. They asked couples, they took the men aside and they say, how do you think you are as a lover with your wife? And most guy, 85% of the guys said, they were good to great lovers. When they interviewed the women, only 15% of the women agreed with their guys. So what's that tell you? That tells you that guys don't know what they don't know. And B, women aren't being honest with them and they aren't asking for what they want. That's A. So the next thing is that somewhere around 50 to 80%, I don't know the numbers of women, do not orgasm from vaginal intercourse. They need clitoral stimulation, maybe combined with G-spot stimulation, whatever. But guys, if you're not able to get it up, doesn't mean the game is over. Mm -hmm. There are many, many other things you can do. And, you know, the biggest of all, I mean, (laughs) there was a great Italian movie where the doctor was was giving a physical to this older man. He said, I want to see your sex organs. And he goes, oh, God, his tongue (laughs) put out his finger. 
and and for us old guys, maybe those are our sex organs. And you know, it just depends on what what the situation. Those is. are the best sex, sex organs at any age for women, for most women. Just for the for you know, that, that's a whole other video. But um, no, it's it's you can absolutely take, and that's one of the the advice uh, bits of advice that lots of experts offer is you know get away from the focus of of uh, uh, internal. Uh, stimulation you know focus on external stimulation to to get past that well you know and and we've had this discussion about judith and i and our our sexual spiritual practice and we have allocated time sunday's our day of worship and it that's not just all going at it like porn stars not at all <laughs> you know what it is is us being there naked and we start off with a conversation we have to get into communication and then we go from there into foreplay and whatever and then we go into the actual love making and you know there's this great book out somebody wrote called ladies come first and it's always you know our practice is to get her because once she's up and juicy then then I can do whatever I want so, uh, <laughs> and, and take as long as I want because she's already happy. Yeah. So uh, if you suit up and show up, as the, as the saying goes, if you get into bed and take your clothes off, then a nice thing can happen. And it may not be penetrative sex. It may not be sex at all. It may just be kissing and caressing and being physically intimate because we need that body contact, that skin to skin contact so important absolutely absolutely and frank we're, we're already coming to the end here uh already oh, i know it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> i i think it's always so fun to talk to you because you do you are you're open you're honest you break you know you just make uh, talking about this uncomfortable topic comfortable and i'm hoping that our viewers feel that way that it might inspire somebody obviously this affects millions of people and a significant amount of people in our age group you know over 50 percent so you know if you're listening you're you're more than likely going through something like this what i want to leave people with is or women in particular stop blaming yourself if you are 90 percent of erectile dysfunction as frank said is physical and get you gotta get to the doctor to make sure there isn't something more serious uh, going on and, you know, and, and then, of course, don't um, be accusatory, but talk about it. Frank, I'll throw it over to you to close. What would you like to leave our viewers well, with? Ladies, if you're serious about this and you really want to know, Google has lots of information. Yeah. And just Google erectile dysfunction, just Google ED, and it'll all come up. And then you can browse and go look. And you, you really need to educate yourself in this. And, and having those conversations is... Um, is really tricky. I know it's hard for guys to talk about. It. They won't probably talk about it. So, ladies, it's up to you to bring it up, but in a very loving, kind way, to say, "How can I help you have a better experience?" And whatever the guys need, and whatever you need, you have to make your your needs known to him in a way that he can fulfill them. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, I have some resources I'll link to in the video description as well, um, including your book, <laughs> uh, a great read, um, you know, and, and uh, information for people to get in touch with you directly if they, if they so choose. So, Frank, thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to hold you over for another segment. There's a couple more things I want to talk to you about. So we'll see you soon on another episode of Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. Thanks, Silka. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here, and when you see that little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too and we'll notify you every time that we launch a new video. See you next time.